If you are feeling uninspired, unmotivated, dull, tired, and like every single day of your life is boring, then you're in need of a rebrand. It is now time to reinvent your entire life and self. Now, as someone who is a huge advocate of self-love, this process is not about letting go of yourself completely and trying to be something that you're not. This is about loving yourself enough to say, my current situation isn't working for me and I deserve better than that, whether that be my environment, my opportunities, my mindset, my confidence, my appearance, etc. This is about stepping into the version of yourself that you were always meant to be. Here is the video structure. It will be split into chapters as always. And don't forget, you can listen to this video in podcast format it is linked down below where you can listen to all of my other videos on the go and if you like the jewelry that i'm wearing don't forget that it's from my very own jewelry brand sojourner studio which is also linked in the description chapter number one understanding this is the most necessary first step to take because here we are going to understand exactly who we are and exactly who we want to be and where we're going to get to. This part of the video is about laying out your mission and planning out your ideal life. So a few ways to do this. Number one, do a SWOT analysis of yourself. If you don't know what that means, it's basically this grid, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you're gonna basically analyze your life. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Which opportunities in your life can you take advantage of? What is threatening you? Are you the one that's self-sabotaging? What is getting in the way of you trying to accomplish your dreams? Another technique to use when understanding how you're gonna get to where you want to be is shadow work now this is super easy all it takes is a quick google search pinterest search shadow work a journal prompt get out a piece of paper and you're going to write the answer to all of these questions this is really going to help you unpack any trauma that you might not be fully addressing or even aware of it's going to help you move on fully from your past and be able to enter the newest era of your life without bringing in your past baggage we don't want that. AKA, this process is about you finally getting out of your own effing way. A few extra questions to ask yourself here might be, what are my insecurities? How do I self-sabotage? You know, how am I holding myself back? What can I currently take advantage of? What are my talents? What do I get the most compliments on? What do people criticize me the most for? And then start working on them. I actually saw a video on the internet ages ago, I can't even remember, of this guy saying that he rang up each of his exes one by one to ask his ex-girlfriends what was wrong with him and where their relationship went wrong. So he called up like four or five girlfriends from the past to fully understand where he went wrong. And it's funny, but I think it's actually a great idea and it can apply to everything, you know? When you and your friends have an argument, why? Like, what is your role in that? The third technique to understanding is creating your alter ego and then stepping into that energy permanently. That is truly the most intense version of a reinvention. You don't have to do that step. Personally, I haven't. I have created my alter ego. I step into her when I want to, but if you really feel like you want to change your life completely, that is the best way. So the context of my past self, my before, I was someone who had a terrible sleep schedule. I would regularly pull all-nighters unnecessarily. I would easily wake up at midday every single weekend. I never went to the gym, even though I really wanted to. When I woke up, I would dread the day ahead and I thought that life was so boring. I ate fast food whenever I wanted to. I had no discipline. I procrastinated on all of my work and often left it to the last minute, forcing me once again to pull all-nighters to get it done. I didn't have any sort of routine or self-care rituals. I would drop everything for others and wouldn't prioritize myself. For example, like last minute plans or parties, I just would have major FOMO and I always put my focus and attention on that rather than myself and getting to my dream future. I never knew what I wanted for my career. I never had clear goals. I never knew my style. I never even knew what I wanted from my relationships. And honestly, to sum it up, I would say that I was just a floater. I was in the space where I was just floating through life. I was allowing things to happen to me, but no more. Eventually I had had enough and I decided to write a script in my notes app of everything I wanted to become. After doing this scripting process, which I'm going to tell you guys about in a minute, eventually I got to my complete rebrand stage, which is where I'm at now. Now it's, I wake up at 7 a.m. every day effortlessly and I go to the gym first thing in the morning. I easily eat healthy food all the time. I have a good skincare routine. I prioritize my self-care. I prioritize my alone time. I am no longer partying, excessive drinking. My circle is minuscule. I have the highest standards for what I expect from my relationships, 
from my friendships and I'm not going to allow just anybody into my life because my energy is precious. I now plan my days in advance and I actually stay on track. I am fully disciplined and determined to get to where I want to be. AKA when I talk about Lola and Athena, it's literally my before and after. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to write this reinvention script. All I did was open my notes app and I wrote down a few headings to categorize everything I wanted to rebrand and reinvent. But each of these headings weren't things like beauty, fashion, goals, finances. Mm -mm. I am writing this script in a way where I am describing my future self. It, everything she does down to every single detail. A great tip here is to also write it in present tense, which will help speed up your manifestations. So my first heading in this reinvention script just said goals. This was the broadest category and this meant that I could actually write specific things in there. So I wrote like hit 100K subscribers, um, be a full-time social media content creator, invest a specific amount of money, hit a credit score of 700 plus, work with these dream brands, start engaging in philanthropy, travel to these specific cities, the list goes on. And then the rest of the headings in the reinvention script go like this. How does she dress? What does her work week look like? What is she doing from Monday to Friday? What happens in her free time? In the evenings, after work, what happens on her weekends? What are her achievements? Does she have awards? Has she done interviews? Has she been featured on podcasts? Who does she spend time with? Does she have her dream man? Is she in networking circles? Does she have a really strong group of besties who are like in the business space? How is her health? Does she take her supplements every day? What does her diet look like? What does her fitness um, routine look like? What are her income streams? We are aiming for at least four streams, people. So we're talking affiliate marketing, her nine to five, her side hustle, her various investments and finally what are her expenses bit of a random one but was super useful to me to kind of get into the mindset of my dream self so I wrote down things like I am not now spending money on meaningless, meaningless things like fashion trends which are gonna go in and out of style majority of my money will go into reinvesting into my business things that are gonna help me level up more money is gonna go into buying self-help books financial literacy books if I'm gonna buy clothes and it has to contribute to me building a capsule wardrobe which is going to be timeless and last me years. I even created a budget for Starbucks because that was my favorite solo date spot and that allowed me to be mindful and spend quality time with myself. When I say we are planning, we are planning, girl. Once I had fully written out my specific and detailed reinvention script with those headings that I mentioned, I paired it with a vision board, but this vision board was more of a mood board, right? So I only did it on Pinterest. It was super easy. Now I create these every few months. The reinvention that I spoke about where I kind of went from like unhealthy, not working, out to where I am now that was my biggest reinvention yet like I turned my life around completely but every three months I go through mini reinventions where I have to remind myself who I am so this is the current rebrand board I have for myself just to encourage myself to really stay on track with my wellness girly era that's what I'm aiming for right now I literally want my life to look like a Pinterest board that's the mission that I've been on for the last few months and then once you've written your reinvention script you've done your SWOT analysis your shadow work your full understanding of who you are and where you're going, it's now time to create solutions. For example, let's say a weakness that you wrote in your SWOT analysis was, I can't wake up early no matter how hard I try. But in your reinvention script, you said that your future ideal self is someone who wakes up effortlessly and gets things done first thing in the morning. How are you actually gonna get from A to B? You can't just say, oh, now is my rebrand era, so this is my goal, I'm gonna do it. How is it magically gonna happen if it hasn't happened so far in your life? So instead, you have to create a solution to be able to bring this brand new habit into your life effortlessly. For example, with me, being an early riser was my problem. To get to where I am now, which is waking up effortlessly, I had to bring in a few techniques, which was one, having a slow morning routine. I had to reward myself the second that I woke up early. I had to have something to look forward to so I could make myself a nice matcha. I could go on a walk. I could watch my favorite show instantly took the pressure out of it. I would literally put my alarm clock on the floor across my room so I had to get out of bed to turn it off. Sometimes I would literally even force somebody to wake me up, whether it be my grandparents when I was living with them, whether it be like a friend calling me, forcing me to wake up. You have to take this so serious, but also what you need to consider is taking each habit week by week. The first week, just focus on waking up earlier. The second week, wake up earlier and then go to the gym once you've woken up. The third week, wake up early, go to the gym and eat healthy, you see? So you're building up slowly. Some more examples on how you can stay disciplined and create solutions to be able to get from your A to your B is 
delete all the takeout apps on your phone, delete your dating apps, block every single one of your exes, change your phone number if you have to, donate or sell your old clothes. You have to get it into your brain that this is so serious. Like taking a measure like changing your phone number or getting rid of all of your old clothes shows you that there is no going back now. This is your time where you're entering a new era and phase of your life there's literally no route for you to get back to where you used to be. Chapter two, your appearance. We all know, I couldn't leave this out, but I'm not gonna spend too long talking about it because we are all about the mental glow up. But this chapter is gonna be split up into three sections, health, beauty, and fashion. So step number one, your health. What does your best self's diet consist of? Those fries are not doing you any good, okay? And I live by this, like, treat yourself and food is not your enemy. However, you should follow the 80-20 rule, which is 80% of the time, you gotta follow a good, healthy diet. Nothing about calorie counting or having to lose a certain amount of weight, just fueling your body with the best nutrients out there. And then the other 20% of the time you can indulge and treat yourself because you deserve it. Another tip I wanna mention in the health category is please start drinking matcha over coffee. Now I used to be a big coffee lover and I still treat myself to it now and again, but I do not drink it on the regular anymore. All I have to say is please listen to this podcast because it transformed my mindset when it came to coffee and taught me so much about the negative effects it has on our gut health, our brain health, our life in general. Next, I wanna say stop listening to everyone else when it comes to diet. People love to normalize, filling our bodies with trash. Unfortunately, society has just normalized it, you know, drinking excessive alcohol, drinking three cups of coffee a day. If you resist all of that peer pressure of trying to be normal and like cool and not care about what you eat, you are gonna feel and look your best in the long run. So please just trust in your health and treating your body like a temple. And the last essential step when it comes to health is take your supplements. Stop skipping out on this step. I've been taking supplements now consistently, finally, for every year and it genuinely has changed my life. This little bottle has been a lifesaver for me, okay? Basically, the aim of this product is that it contains high quality nutrients, which are gonna help fill nutrient gaps. I've been prioritizing having a good gut health for the longest, ever since I learned about the effects that it can have on our brain health, on our bodies, on our skin, on so many things. And this little bottle helps me do it. As I said before, this is Symbiotic Plus, which I've been taking every day. I literally only have to take one pill a day. It contains prebiotics, postbiotics. And that is probably my favorite unique feature of this brand, because did you know, most of the top selling brands, gut supplements do not even include a postbiotic. This one's got you covered. Basically, prebiotics support the growth and activity of beneficial bacteria living in your gut. Probiotics are live microorganisms, which will help you relieve things like bloating, gas, and then the post Postbiotic function in this helps with your gut lining and it also supports your gut barrier function. I personally love this brand because it's vegan, it's so clean, it doesn't use any of those artificial nasties that most foods and supplements have nowadays. On the back they make every ingredient super clear and they even make their supplier chain super clear so you know exactly what you're consuming. So if you are ready to start a daily ritual that you feel good about, you can head to the link in my description to find the code and the link because Rich Will are offering all of you 30% off your first month. On to the next category for appearance, fashion. I'm gonna keep this super simple. If I am not wearing it in five years, I am not buying it. For many years now, I have completely quit trend buying. Personally, I like more elevated pieces, pieces that make me look elegant, put together, sophisticated, super expensive, even though it's not. And you know why I dress like that? Because that is the way last year I envisioned my future self to dress like. So I changed my shopping habits and I started building my capsule wardrobe around what I envisioned my dream future self to be. And now that is what I dress like all the time because that's also a form of you manifesting where you want to get to, you know? You want to be a business owner? just like it. You wanna get into fashion and be creative, just like it. But if you want more detailed tips on this, then I recommend you watch my How to Dress Better video. It talks all about color theory, how to put outfits together, finding your style, and all of that good stuff. And the final section for this chapter, beauty. Now for this, I really recommend going on TikTok, going on YouTube, watching loads of makeup tutorials. Like I need you to learn the techniques because a lot of the times it's not about buying the most expensive makeup products. I don't believe in that. It's about learning how to place them in order to enhance your particular facial features. You know, if you have bad genetic dark circles, that's a problem that I suffer with, learning your color correction techniques to be able to hide them effectively. And most importantly, learning makeup that suits 
your face type. Now, I've said this before, with my eye shape, I think that like my inner corner cut liner really suits my, my eyes, but it's not gonna suit everybody's. And it's taken me a couple of months of trial and error, trying out different makeup looks to know what suits my face the best. And you have to invest the same time to be able to look your best as well. Another rule I follow when it comes to beauty is buying one of everything and then sticking to it. I have one eyebrow product, I have one eyeliner, one concealer, one foundation. I always keep buying the same one. I don't waste my time trying out new makeup products because what works, works. The next step is fix your posture. Yeah, that's right, I called you out and I called myself out too. That is something I'm trying to work on at the moment. Buy an ergonomic friendly chair. If you're sitting at a desk having to work all day, you don't want to be hunched back, you want to be walking through the streets looking like a supermodel and your posture is going to help you do that. And lastly, start exploring non-toxic products and clean beauty. I very recently discovered this. Most perfumes out on the market, I'm talking like 90% of our favorite most rated perfumes actually have super toxic ingredients in them that are hormone disruptors, aka they can contribute to you having a hormonal imbalance. What does that do? It makes you tired. It gives you mood swings, it gives you painful periods, it gives you acne. It Fs you up in so many ways and I am done risking it. So I've literally stopped using my favorite perfumes even though I spent so much money on them because I wanna give my body its best shot. And instead, I have started investing in clean beauty. These are the perfumes that I ordered recently. Chapter three, your mindset. This is my personal favorite and this chapter is split into two sections. Undoing the negative, and incorporating the positive. When it comes to undoing the negative, it's very simple, okay? It's like what I talked about before, doing your shadow work, doing your SWOT analysis, and eliminating all threats, okay? You don't want anything, any obstacles getting in the way of your mission to becoming your best self. So I'm talking about blocking out your exes. Delete pictures of anyone that's no longer in your life. I don't care how great the relationship was, how much love you had for them. I have personally done this and it took me a long time to do it. I get it, especially if you attach to memories, but the memory of them will always live in your head and they're always gonna be a part of your life experience, but you don't need that clutter in your phone of someone who didn't respect you, who wasn't there for you, who didn't align with you. They're not a part of your journey anymore. Let it go so then you can signal to yourself that you're stepping into a new era and you're not bringing in any of that baggage into it. Be self-aware, identify your insecurities and start working back from them. Same again with self-limiting beliefs. Oh, but I can't do this. But it's easy for you to say because you have money and it's harder for the rest of us. No, 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 no. You are sounding like Lola. We are more like Athena who, even though she doesn't have everything, she doesn't have everything figured out. She is so concerned with her manifesting and building her abundance mindset that she is constantly speaking positive words out into the universe and about herself and her life. She is no longer making excuses for herself, engaging in imposter syndrome or self-doubt. She is trying to give herself her best shot in all areas of her life. And lastly, my favorite step, change up your environment. Once again, this is about signaling to your mind that this is a new phase. We are not following our old patterns anymore, okay? This is super fun. You can change out your bedroom layout, change out your wallpaper on your iPhone even, change out your morning routine, who you hang out with, the shows that you watch, the, pod the podcast that you listen to. This is the process of starting to live like your future self and leaving your old unhealthy self behind. Now onto incorporating the positive into your life and becoming the new and improved version of yourself. Step number one, stay self-aware. This is what I like to call the, but what about me mindset? Meaning in every situation, whenever you're frustrated with someone, you've had a falling out, an argument, whatever, instead of focusing on how that person's hurt you, where they went wrong, what you wish they did, instead you're gonna look at yourself and you're gonna think, okay, but what about me? What did I say that maybe contributed to this? What did I do that possibly triggered that person? It's not about saying that the entire thing is your fault and you're a bad person, but just looking out for your future self as well and making sure that you're not self-sabotaging. Don't let your ego run the show, okay? Whenever I've been annoyed at someone, I'm like, am I self-sabotaging here? Is my trauma having a role in this? Do I have self-limiting beliefs about this potential friendship or this person? Call yourself out on it. Step number two, embody the habits that you want to have and the lifestyle you want to have. So this is about saying, I am a, rather than I have to. For example, I am a person that wakes up early every day with ease and enjoys it and gets stuff done. Not, oh, I have to wake up early tomorrow. You're making it sound like a chore. You're making it sound like it's harder than it is. And you're making it sound like it's out of your reach. You don't have it. You're not capable of that. You need to start identifying with your dream habits and your goals. You are someone who can wake up early. You are a business owner. You are someone who is financially abundant and so on. 
Step number three, engage with your past and your future self. This is a great step because it's all about looking at your current self from an outside perspective. You're kind of taking a step back and evaluating where you are in this present moment. I find that this really takes the difficulty out of decision making because you're getting into the mind of your future self, where you wanna be, and your past self, who you're constantly trying to make proud. So if you are struggling with something and you take a step back and you get into the mind of your younger self, would they be proud of what you're doing right now and how you're acting? Would your future self look at you and nod in approval that you're on the right track? If the answer is no to both of those questions, then you know you need to change something up. Step number four, develop the I don't give an F mindset. I am so done with you guys caring about what other people say about you. It is holding you so far back in life. Speaking from experience, the second that I let that ish go, I flourished. I had the confidence to be able to be a YouTuber and make this my career. I had the opportunities to start modeling, to do photo shoots in the street, and so much good and abundance came into my life. You know why? Because I embraced being cringe. I embraced being embarrassing and that was only possible because I let go of what everyone thought about me, even including my family. And a great example of this is my family were not approving of me filming on a camera and putting my face on the internet and trying to be a content creator and make this my job. They made fun of me for it. They would joke about it all the time. Do I hit any jokes now? No. Now it's well done. Now it's we can't believe you got to where you are. And it just goes to show Yes, you love them, they love you, they might have their, your best interests at heart, but you can't listen to what other people say because they don't have your life. They don't have your thoughts, your creativity, your potential. That is all down to you, it's personal. So stop explaining yourself to people, stop sharing your goals, they're not gonna get it, it's not worth it, okay? But I promise you, if you believe in yourself, you will end up getting to where you wanna be and everyone around you isn't gonna be judging, they're gonna be clapping. And also, please stop being upset about not getting attention from the wrong people. Okay, if someone judged you, made fun of you, come on. First of all, the fact that they did that shows how lame they are. You wouldn't want to have their life. You wouldn't want to trade paces with them. You would not want to be anything like them. So why does that opinion matter? Why do they have any relevance? So when you're rebranding yourself, start hanging out with different people. You don't have to cut out everybody you already know, but also start expanding your circle and networking. Talk to people who own businesses, who are in the place that you want to be, not even to get anything from them or have them become your mentors. They can just be people you talk to and catch up with every now and again, but just the fact that they're in that place normalizes that experience to you, that I can be in this world and I belong here and I'm also gonna get here one day. I say this all the time, who you follow online is every everything. Every six months, I always do an Instagram page, a TikTok page. I go through everybody I follow online. If you go on my social media pages, you'll see that who I follow is minuscule, two, 300 people. And it's never more than that because it's always people who either inspire, motivate, or educate me. I have no business following anybody else. It will allow you to stay focused and actually gain something from being on social media every day instead of endlessly scrolling through pointless memes. And the last step for this chapter, you get to decide your emotions. You get to change the narrative of a frustrating situation. You get to decide whether or not something ruins your day. You need to finally realize this and step back into your power. If someone said something that was hurtful, take the necessary measures, you know, distance yourself from them, don't give them a reaction to satisfy them, realize they're not the right person for you to be friends with, associate yourself with, etc. Don't be upset about it all day because they're just not worth it. Turn that pain and hurt into your power, into your motivation. I cannot tell you the amount of times that people did me wrong or I went through breakups and it gave me such a surge of motivation to level up my life, to get to a place where they couldn't reach me, to get to a place where I was so obsessed with my creativity and my passions and my job that I didn't even have the mental capacity to be hurt over what people would say. Chapter number four, your brand new habits. You wanna try and carry these out on the most regular basis, hopefully every day. Step number one, exposure therapy. Now, this is a great confidence builder. I'm talking about getting used to being cringy and embarrassing, facing your fears, basically. I had to do this in a content creation aspect, so I would literally take a tripod with my phone out onto the street wearing the most extravagant outfit in the city center on main roads where cars were driving back and forth, people were walking past me, not even in a quiet area, and stand there and pose and take pictures of myself on my phone, on a tripod. It was so extra and I was from an incredibly small town. So people stared, people judged. It went so far that cars would drive past and laugh at me, yell at me outside their cars. It was mortifying. Did I let it stop me? No. Every single time I went out to do that, was I so scared? Yeah. I was so scared I didn't even want to get out of my car to do it. The more and more I did it, I think maybe I did it five, six times. It's nothing to me now. I could go out onto the street right now 
I'm literally watching people walk along the street right now and I could do it and I would not feel a thing because I've become numb to that feeling and the same goes for every fear you have. Step number two, become the life of the party. I have my own meaning for this and this means when you walk into a social event, networking event, party, whatever, you're gonna pour all of your attention into how you make other people feel. This is my favorite step for reinventing yourself and having your rebrand because it makes people fall in love with you, quite literally, and it will help you widen your network. When you're focusing on how you make other people feel, you're asking them questions, you are pouring so much attention into trying to get to know them genuinely on a deep level and actually understand the person in front of you, listening to every word they say, rather than being on your phone, being in your head, oh my God, how do I look? What's my body language like? Uh, I wonder what they're thinking of me. All of your attention is on that other person. You will become so attractive. Because let me tell you from experience, there is nothing more unattractive than a person in a social setting who cannot stop talking about themselves. Or even when they are trying to make conversation with you, they have to link everything back to themselves all the time. It's so boring. Step number three, stop being everywhere at all times for everyone. Boundaries, people. How are you ever gonna level up if you keep putting others first? You don't need to show up to everything. I promise you, you're not missing out. And I speak from experience, okay? I was in the middle of university and I would be invited to a party last minute. I'm talking, it starts in 30 minutes and I was in my room studying. I was trying to work on my side hustle. I would drop everything, I'd get ready and I'd go out because I had major FOMO because I wanted to be liked and popular and I wanted to be known as the adventurous outgoing one. But all that did was hold me back in life. And also when you stop going to things like these and you're just being picky about the events you go to and you're choosing what you attend on whether it aligns with your future purpose, whether it aligns with your vibrational energy and where you wanna be, your life will become so much more peaceful because also not everyone needs to know your business, okay? You need to cut off access for the people who don't align with where you wanna be. And I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but as soon as I stopped showing up to those university parties, the further I got ahead. And I left university with way more opportunities, way more things at my disposal, and I'm so grateful every single day that I missed all of those parties. The next step is to identify the nonsense in your day and then remove it. This is where you need to be a little bit self-aware and take accountability as to how you sometimes self-sabotage, okay? So for example, one thing I always used to do when I woke up is like, I do my morning chores, I do the dishes, clean up a bit, like start getting my day together. And I'd put one of my favorite shows on in the background, just playing. When that happens, I felt more comfortable to then sit on the sofa and have my laptop in front of me and work that way while the TV was still running because I didn't want to turn it off. And I just started my day on that note of kind of being in a relaxing, cozy mood where I can watch TV. Uh-uh. I had to cut that out. That was nonsense in my day that was pushing me further away from my work because then I couldn't have my undivided attention onto it and I wasn't starting my day being super focused and productive. Same with my phone, it's on do not disturb and it's in another room because I know if it's not, I'm gonna touch it. The next step is fake it till you make it. All of these goals, they can be very overwhelming, okay? It's like, how the hell do I go from A to B overnight? No one expects you to, but a really easy way to get there faster is to fake it till you make it. Now, for those of you who don't know, I used to be painfully shy. I was quiet. I couldn't speak to new people, couldn't make new friends. I was a big, big introvert. I was a nerd. I just was nothing like who I am today. And the reason I got to where I am today, being loud and extroverted and talking to random strangers on the street easily, is because I pretended to be that way. And then naturally, that characteristic naturally became a part of me. And now I can do it effortlessly. So this goes for when you are having a conversation with someone, force yourself to make eye contact. And while you're doing it, in your head you might think, oh my God, this is so scary, I don't wanna do this, this is so awkward. You have to force yourself to keep doing it. If you love yourself enough to create a better life for yourself, once again, you have to get comfortable with sitting with the discomfort. And the last step for your brand new habits is, hot girls are always grateful. On your journey to the top, don't forget to thank the universe for all of the blessings you have already received along the way. I always say it, gratitude is the greatest vibrational frequency that you can operate at. It's gonna enhance your mood. It's gonna speed up your manifestations like this. It's gonna help you develop your abundance mindset and it's gonna help you attract so much more into your life. And finally, chapter number five is the homework chapter. You already know I'm about to give you actionable advice. So when you switch off this video, you can start ASAP, let's go. Step number one, do your SWOT analysis. Google some shadow work prompts to fully evaluate your weaknesses, how you're sabotaging yourself, how you're holding yourself back, what is the thing that is preventing you from getting to your desired self? 
Step number two, once you've done this, now it's time to draw out your ideal self. Who do you wanna become? What does she look like? What does she dress like? What do her mornings look like? Her evenings, her weekends, who are her friends? Homework task number three, now that you've evaluated your current situation and you've drawn out the map of your future situation, it's time to create solutions so that you can get from A to B much faster. Like I said before, the waking up early example, make that situation so much easier for yourself. Homework task number four, create your mood board. You know, you can go back to chapter one where I told you the headings that I put in my reinvention script. Make sure you write that out and set it as your iPhone wallpaper. Look at it every single day. Remind yourself of the mission that you're on. The next homework step is to invest in one thing that will level up your appearance this week. It doesn't need to be anything too crazy. It could be buying a new little makeup product that you think is gonna help you look more glowy. It could be investing in your health supplements. It could be finally buying a gym membership, going to a Pilates class. And the last homework task is to commit to one new self-care ritual this week, whether it be downloading a yoga app, starting gua sha, meditating, going to sleep earlier, start journaling, start gratitude, the list goes on. I wish you the best of luck in your journeys. I'm so proud of you for getting this far in the video. Go you, that's already an amazing sign that you're gonna get to where you wanna be. And I can't wait to witness your journeys. A lot of you have been sending me DMs of your recent solo dates and you know how you've improved your life what your self-growth journeys look like and just know I see so many of them and I'm sending so much love because I'm so proud of you and I'm seeing how all of you are turning into the new and improved versions of yourself and I love that and that brings us to the end of this video I hope you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure you hit subscribe like this video and comment down below let me know what you'd like to see next don't forget I have a brand new vlog channel which is linked in the description so you can have a BTS of my life what my self-care rituals look like my daily routines so have a watch and let me know what you think and I will see you guys in the next video I appreciate you thank you so much for watching bye